Are you tired of traffic jams, air pollution, and unsafe streets in big cities? Find out how Lusaka and Cali are revolutionizing transportation for a greener future right now. It's time to explore sustainable transport solutions that are already making a difference in places like Lusaka, Zambia, and Cali, Colombia. In Lusaka, Zambia, the city is investing in a bus rapid transit system that not only reduces traffic congestion, but also cuts down on carbon emissions. Listen what who has to say from the expert. How did you get to work today? Did you walk, ride a bike, take public transportation? We are here in the city of Cape Town and we're going to talk about transportation of the future. Is it possible to make it greener, safer, healthier for you and the planet? Here to talk about it is Dr. Etienne Krug. Welcome, Etienne. Talk to us about challenges to greener, sustainable transportation in cities. What is the scale of the challenge and the problem? Today, more than half of the world's population already lives in cities. And we expect that by 2050, there will be two thirds of the world population. This brings cities huge challenges, as well as opportunities for improvement. For transportation, it means that we have more cars and more people on the road, leading to congestion, to pollution, often also stress. So there's a lot of challenges coming from unsustainable transport. But we can make our transport sustainable, the transport of the future. It should look like a city where we can walk, cycle, use public transportation, and get anywhere to work, to school, to the store in 10, 15, 20 minutes, so that, you know, it's much more manageable. And as a result of that, we'll have less non-communicable diseases because we will be moving more, we will be breathing less polluted air, we'll feel better, our mental health will be improved, and road deaths will go down. Etienne, is that even possible, these cities of the future? If you grow up or if you live right now in a big metropolitan city, it almost seems impossible, right? And yet there are more than 70 cities that are actually working towards this future, this greener, more sustainable future. Talk to us about it. It is totally possible. For example, Mexico has made huge efforts to promote cycling, gaining back lanes from roads in order to favor safe cycling because it's not only about putting more bicycles on the road it's also to make it safe in cali colombia there's bicycle doctors who repair bikes for free in order to promote it pontevedra in spain has banned cars from the city center you know to promote walking and cycling um, milan has made a huge bicycle network it's still uh, being developed many countries and cities are also tackling speed around schools in Lusaka, for example, after I think 12 or so children had died on the way to school because there was simply no safe walking routes for children to school, speed was reduced to 30 km per hour around school with immediate results in saving lives. So, so there are plenty of examples of cities moving forward because they know it's the, it's the healthy and the green and the best way for all. So I think we hear about people reclaiming cities, cities creating greener, healthier spaces. Talk to us about the cost of not acting. The cost of not acting is basically continuing in the direction that many cities are still taken, which is traffic jams, congestion, pollution, and death and injury and disability on the road. It's a price we do not want to pay and we do not have to pay because this is not the city of the future. We know that these interventions are cost-effective. Speed bumps, one of the most simple road safety interventions, has also been labeled as one of the most cost-effective public health in general interventions, uh, showing that you know by acting on speed and on road safety in general, we are improving health. Etienne, what can people do to keep themselves safe and healthy in their own transport choices. We still have cities where it is unsafe to use these active modes of transportation. In that case, I think it's important people demand action from their policymaker. Actions to have the right legislation in place in terms of speed, drink driving, the use of helmets, etc. But also that the legislation is enforced because in many cases legislation is there, but it's just ink on paper. The recent WHO 
World Report on Road Traffic Injury Prevention showed that some countries over the last decade of action in 10 years managed to reduce road deaths by 50% or more and another 35 by 30% or more, showing that it is possible by putting in place these measures. Good laws, enforcement, good infrastructure and vehicle safety as well as strong action. Thank you, Etienne. Thank you, Vismita. This not only reduces the reliance on cars, but also promotes a healthier lifestyle for residents. By investing in greener, safer and healthier transport options, cities like Lusaka and Cali are paving the way for a more sustainable future. It's time for other cities to follow their lead and make our urban spaces more livable for everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more inspiring stories on sustainable living.